Let's solve a second problem uh, as our introduction to the ideal gas law. We are asked to determine the specific volume in cubic meters per kilogram of refrigerant 134A at 16 bar and 100 degree, degrees C using three different methods. The first is going to be uh, the refrigerant superheat tables, which will give us a known accurate value. The second is something known as the generalized compressibility chart. And we'll use the ideal gas law uh, as the third method. So let's look at uh, the first problem. Let's go to the R134A superheat table at 16 bar 100 degrees C. And we get a specific volume of 0.01601 cubic meters per kilogram. So this is our known accurate volume of specific volume. Now, the generalized compressibility chart, I, let me show you how to, how to use that. Um, before we can use it, we need three values for our particular gas. We need the critical temperature, which is the temperature at the critical point. We need the critical pressure, which is the pressure at the critical point, and we need its molecular weight. Once we have those, we can calculate what's called the reduced temperature and the reduced pressure. Well, the reduced temperature at this particular state is just the temperature of the state divided by um, the critical temperature. And the reduced pressure at this state is the pressure divided by the critical pressure. And we always have to work with absolute values of temperature and pressure. So the temperature in this case is 100 degrees C uh, plus 273, which gives us 373 degrees Kelvin. So let's calculate the reduced temperature and pressure. The reduced temperature is 373 degrees Kelvin divided by 374 degrees Kelvin. We'll take that as a value of 1. And the reduced pressure is 16 bar divided by 40.7 bar, which is a value of 0.39. Now we can take these values of T sub bar and P sub bar and go into the chart and determine a value of Z. So here's our generalized compressibility chart. We see our horizontal axis is the reduced pressure. And the vertical axis is this compressibility factor Z that uh, we are interested in finding. And we have all these different lines which represent different values of the reduced temperature. So we're going to use a reduced temperature of one, and that's going to be this this uh, lowest pot, this lowest line it is uh, T sub R is equal one, and we're using a reduced pressure of 0.39. So this red line here's 0.39 uh, on the reduced pressure scale. So I'm going to go vertically uh, at a reduced pressure of 0.39 until I hit this line which is the reduced temperature of one. And from here, I'll go over to my vertical axis and pick off this value, um, 0.86. So we'll take Z as 0.86. Now this gas is not an ideal gas. If it were an ideal gas, Z would basically be one, okay? But we don't, we can use this chart for any gas. Uh, we doesn't need to be an ideal gas, in fact, that's why we use it. We use it for non-ideal gases. And it's amazing how uh, reasonably accurate uh, this chart is. So let's calculate uh, the value of specific volume by this chart. Well, what we do is we take the, the ideal gas law and we add this Z fact, compressibility factor here, okay? So that uh, uh, PV, in, for an ideal gas, PV is RT. Well, for non-ideal gas, we'll introduce Z, which is not one. If it were one, then we wouldn't be using this chart. <clears throat> so we can calculate that V is ZRT over P. Let's do that. Specific volume is Z, 0.86, times the gas constant for R134A, which is 8.314 divided by 102.03, kilojoules per kilogram K, times a temperature of 373 Kelvin, 
divided by a pressure of 16 bar and I have unit conversions to do, I need to convert bar cubic meters to 100 kilojoules. And I get a value of specific volume is uh, 0.1634 cubic meters per kilogram. The division sign here is missing. Well, this chart gives us a value that's only 2% high, uh, which is fairly reasonable. So again, we see that uh, this chart can be used for non-ideal gases. Um, we can use the ideal gas law with compressibility factor Z for non-ideal gases and get a reasonably accurate answer. And sometimes this is all we've got if you're dealing with gases that uh, uh, don't have tables. And so the generalized compressibility chart is the way to go with that. Let's look at the third part of this problem and calculate the specific volume of this non-ideal gas with the ideal gas law. And we already can predict it's not going to give us a great answer. Um, the specific volume of an ideal gas is RT over P, and we have all of those values as before. And we calculate a specific volume of 0.0190 cubic meters per kilogram. Now this is 19% greater than our known table value. So clearly the ideal gas law only works with ideal gases. If, you, if the gas is not ideal, then obviously we're going to use tables if we have them. But many substances don't have published tables. And so what we've seen is if you don't have a table and you have a non-ideal gas, then you must use the generalized compressibility chart. And that will give you a reasonably good answer.